Hey guys. Today is Tuesday, April 26th. Actually, it's my lover's birthday today. Shout out to my lover. At any rate, I don't want to make this too long. I really wish I could have done this last night when I was smoking my cigars and having some wine. I was more fluid in thoughts last night, but I was a little too loose. I didn't want I ain't want to put myself out there, but I do want to say I finished Grace. These are my pre-publication thoughts for the project, but I finished Grace. I started my reread Tuesday night and I think the 19th, Tuesday the 19th, and I finished on Sunday, two days ago, the 24th. I don't know if I've ever done my final read that fast, but it could, it honestly could be because typically I do my final read from my iPad so that I can see it as you guys are seeing it and I can catch that error, those errors that way. I've been doing that since an author put me onto it in my like waiting to breathe days, my my love my loves and Incon inconvenient truth days. But this time I said, you know what? I really would like because I was really trying to get the book out before May first. Um, but when I was done, my publishing partner said, nah, um, the first so I can have a clean you know run of numbers so i said okay i'll respect that since i took so long but anyway i did my final uh read from my laptop i actually did it from the manuscript um on a laptop and i did some polishing and then i had to send it back out to both editors for uh actually i just sent it back out to both editors for another read at least my my line editor she wants to do another read of it with my polishing my developmental editor um i think she's gonna spot read for the, like the third time but anyway it uh and, and my 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 proofreader is just i think she's at this hour she may be halfway through with her second read of it um and it's a process it's really really a process to clean um, my manuscripts. I can't speak for any other author, but you guys know how I feel about errors. And speaking of which, I freaking love this book. I love all my books, right? And and here's the thing with my process. I endeavor each time to get better. And what am I getting better at? I'm getting better at really conveying what I feel or what I felt when I when I encountered the, the set of clients or when they told me they, sh they shared this particular scene with me. I feel it when they share it with me. So it is my endeavor to have you feel it, or at least for me to feel it once I do my final read. And when I tell you, I was like blown away with the the banter, like the quick wittedness of Ashira. Um, I really fell hard for Jazz. Like, you know, it, it, he's just he's just everything that Jazz, and he's not perfect but he's everything and I that is my job and that's what I try to do each time I come with it um and you guys may not you know I'm not going to catch everybody because of the clients that I select but I it is my goal my my passionate goal is to have you love me the artist you may not like all of my clients and that's fine so long as I love them I can say my heart goes into them and I put everything into them and also each time I am perfect, I'm perfecting how I convey what they've shown me. That's what I challenge myself to do. I challenge myself, myself not to do repeated words and phrases that LB is familiar with, but it may not be something jazz is like, oh, I was thinking about this last night when I was having my cigar and wine, how for, for me, I think the reason why I can never be considered an urban writer, um, not that there's anything with urban because I have urban elements and most of my books so I, I don't shy away from urban at all but um the reason why I, I I could never be considered as urban is because if you're a client of mine you can be a sub character and be who you are and I'm going to record you as you are but if you are a client of mine if you cannot articulate a sentence when you want to when it's necessary it doesn't have to be every sentence LB ain't got nothing for you I'm not attracted to that type of man and of course I have to be attracted to the heroes before before I'm gonna take them on, take him on. There has to be some type of attraction to the chemistry with from the heroine or between the heroine and the hero for me to to take them on. It has to be a, a marriage of of those things. So I'm never going to be okay with writing writing about or taking on a client who is illiterate.
it. I'm just not. I'm just not. And so with jazz, me and I had to warn my editing team and even highlight in the document, like do like highlight means do not change this. This is written purposely. So those are the things that I really try to work on because I want jazz to be jazz. I want you guys to get him as he is. And it may not be the suave or the dictation or the 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 what did what did jazz say the lexical like the the highbrows lexicality lexicality i'm i'm saying it wrong but something i learned from jazz it may not be that of ezra like every you know you, you may not get that but you're definitely going to be able to get his feelings and when he wants to speak it in a coherent sentence he's going to speak it another thing that i did learn about jazz a revelation that came while i was uh probably nearing the end of this book was that and I feel like I talked to someone about it. I don't know if it I don't know if it was my 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 developmental editor or what. But Jazz knows how to articulate his feelings. He knows how to do that. And it's because he has a father who was not was not a street guy. Like his mom was in the streets, you'll see. But he was not in the, his father was not in the streets. His father's very pretentious or attempts to be and we'll see you know jazz talk about that too but a lot of you know just closing up what i mean by me working on my craft and also you understanding that you're not going to get a lot of broken language from my heroes even if they are from the street you didn't get it from young lord you're just not going to get it raj is from the streets as well he just he's a church you know he was a church boy um but you're just not going to get that from lb and i think that separates me from an urban author because i'm i just i'm not even in my real life, I come from an inner city. I come from the projects, right? Project setting. Since my, my undergrad years, you will never catch me loving on a thuggable. It's just not, I like articulate men. I like smart men. I like men who who can teach me things. So I'm just, that's those are the type of clients that, that are going to attract me to read. Um, moving along, uh, what are we going to find in Grace? First of all, I feel like I got... I didn't, there weren't necessarily critiques, but when I read the reviews for Mercy, a few people commented on the fact of, well, what about Ashira's mother? Like, why didn't we hear anything about Shishi's mom? Like, as if, <laughs> as if I can forget that. Like, as if, like, guys, let me tell a story. I get it. There's so much, there's such an overwhelming amount of details that goes into an LV journey, you know? an LB journey. So you have to just allow me to kind of flesh it out. I'm not really good at missing points. Once in a while, I have missed like minor details. And then I have my editing staff remind me like, hey, well, what about this? Or what about that? Um, but let me just let me get into it. You know, there was a lot, there was this heaviness with Ashira, her, her, her relationship with her mom that I could not get into with book one, because we had to focus on what Jazz's day-to-day -day life was, what Ashira was into. Like, for instance, in book two, I don't even think we have a scene of Ashira at her at her studio. But I had to give that in book one because I had this character development. There's references to her being at her studio or will be at her studio. But that's not something I spent time on because I had to get into um, a, a different level of character development. And we do get that the, the answer of her relationship with her mom. Um which is which is i think i think what i think went over very very well um what else we'll see um we'll see them fall in love we'll see them fall in love i typically if you pay attention i typically don't do i don't do insta love even though there's nothing wrong with it every once in a while but i typically for some for some reason find myself with heroes who are even if even if they're physically attracted to the heroines like my female clients they're not trying to marry them like they're not trying to get in any noble you know serious relationship with them for whatever reasons for a married of reasons but like jazz eventually and you guys may not have caught it in mercy when they are in brown baristas that's the coffee shop across the street from my work office my therapist my therapy office um, he says to her in a flash, like, now I know where I know you from. And I never elaborated on that because when I'm writing and I had to tell my, I had to tell my editing team this, like they were saying, and I think Allegra, Allegra from a bourbon book street, bourbon street bookers. Um, cause I, I, I have them doing my post publication edits. 
And she said, LB, I don't know if this is an error, but it doesn't say when you start on this text stream who's, whose point of view it is. But I know it's from, I think she said either Jazz or Shira. But I know, and I said exactly. Because I feel like at this point, if you are in the LBU, who I really cater to the most, I do try to cater to new people as well. But I feel like the fashion of my, my writing has really been to wow members of the LBU. And, 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 and prayerfully, the people who are not, they'll come in some way, somehow. But if you are and you pay attention to my style, you know how I bold, how I, I italicize. You know these things. Like, you know all brands and my books should be italicized. I feel like I talked about this in my pre, my previous pre-publication thoughts. But like Starbucks, Lowe's, Brown Baristas here, Mall, all of the, every brand, whether it's real or fictional, is italicized why because i want all of the fictionals to be on the same level as the as the non-fictional brands so we are in a universe this is our this is our you know simulated world but this is our world so um there's a groove to it you know um i don't even know how i got off on that tangent but um i said they fall in love right did i did i say that they fall in love well let me go back there because i can't remember what got me off on that tangent but <laughs> they fall in love and what I did want for Ashira and Jazz, and for you guys, because I, I don't take you guys in with me while I'm creating. I don't. And I know that sounds arrogant, but I'm okay with being arrogant about this because I, I let everybody talk their smack and their reviews and whatever. Um, but it, then this is my time to just, you want to know who LB is. This is who LB is. I don't take readers in when I'm creating. And I shouldn't because this is a personal pursuit. This is something that I utilize a gift that God has given me that I try to perfect. I'm trying to work on. I'm trying to uh, evolve in. Um, so I don't think about you guys. But what I will do, though, when I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to lay the story out, I will say what I won't do for my sister readers or my readers in general is X, Y, Z. And I didn't want to delay the love because in, in Love Velvet's books, you know there's going to be a lot of, you know, we have two strong personalities and it's going to be a lot of, you know, bumping heads and so I knew with Ashira and Jazz I wanted to focus on how they were in love and they were carefree and I feel like I had a period of that um maybe around a 60 percent mark don't quote me on that and then I feel like as soon as they had that comfortability that's when she learned of Jazz's charges and and Ashira did not pull Arena and ran totally she didn't do that but she shut down on him you know um, which I felt was very realistic because she, she was in love with him. She wasn't going to let him go. She even told Juggy, and Juggy had to check her about how she treated him after him, after Jess told her about the murders. And, and, and Juggy was just like, well, why don't you just go your own? You're not built for this. Why don't you go? I'm sorry for the spoiler, but I have to say this because Juggy is hilarious. And as Cheryl was taken aback, and that's when her valley girl came out. That's what Juggy said. That's her, her valley girl came out and she was like, oh. <gasps> I thought we were friends. I am never leaving him to fuck another woman. Like, it's just, it, I'm paraphrasing here, but that's some of what, it, what she said. Because she does love jazz. And she told him, like, I, I'm in love with you. So I love the beauty of that. So I, guys, I ate this book up. <laughs> I kept telling Josh Renee, this book is so good. This book is so good. She was like, okay, love, I can't wait for it to come out. But it's so good. It really, really is good. And I'm so happy and I also wanted to discuss about this timeline because I'm sure what I'm going to put in the end of this book is that the final book, The Promise, will be out in the fall. Um, it used to take me, and I've talked about this before, it used to take me about three to four months to three to five months to put out a book. Now it's like consistently five months, but I really think it's because December, I did not get a lot of writing done. I did some things in my home, um, some, some soft touches uh, in, in terms of my decor. I celebrated my birthday. And I'm not a, I'm not the type of person, oh, celebrate me all month. It wasn't that. It was just really, I had a lot going on. So I may have written all of 3,000 words in December. So I technically lost a month because I started writing the, I started writing Grace in like the end of November while the editors had Mercy. So I, 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 I rolled right into it. Like I'll be writing The Promise starting next week. Um, but it's just, I think that's what, that's what kind of tripped me up. But I do give myself a lot of time because I am writing slower and, um, I never want to make promises I can't keep. And I don't think I've done that to date in my career, but I've been accused of doing that. Even with audiobooks. like I never promised you guys, 
I've never promised you audiobooks in my full catalog, and I feel like some people think I did because my peers are doing it. I never <laughs> say it. In fact, I ain't even, I'm not even sold, me or my publishing partner, I ain't even sold on audiobooks. It, we don't make money off of them. <laughs> as much as people say I want them, well, we don't, my publishing partner is waiting for the return. <laughs> we ain't getting it. <laughs> So anyway, uh, and that's that's for all audiobooks. That you know, it's not just for the one we did independently with Love and Rhythm and Blues, because people have their crit criticisms about me using new narrators, and I don't really care about that. You know, I don't. If I if I'm connecting with them, similar to my clients, then I'm good. It is for me to have to choose how my art is going to be interpreted. I told you guys, you know, I'm humble, but I'm I'm very very much confident in who I am. But anyway, I'm gonna get started on that next week. Um. And I just wanted to remind you, yeah, I just wanted to remind you that what I got possibly the week, the first week Mercy was published. I was in, an, I was in, a, I was in a beauty salon. I was in my, I was in my, my stylist chair and this often happens. I got a visual. Okay. So across, across the, the, the area from my salon is a barbershop. So just like I'm sitting in a chair and I can see up into the barbershop, there's a chair right in the barbershop that can see to me. And there was a man in there, a young man. He was a young man, though. And he had his daughter with him. His daughter was, like, playing and, like, playing with her. I don't know. I think she had a toy with her. And the father was, like, she he, she was literally, like, a few feet in front of him. Her, his eyes were on her, but he was talking to his barber. And then, boom, I got the vision for, I got the vision for Jazz. Um, and I, I, I think I'm about to give away a spoiler. Um, so I'm going to stop at that. But I will say that that is when I understood book three. Because I didn't know what was going to happen in book three. I just knew that there would be a book three. Not because I wanted there to be, but literally for their, the complication of their stories. Their story, their journey. I knew there would have to be a book three. But that's when I got book three. So just like I told you guys on a previous uh, uh, pre-publication thoughts for Mercy. I'm going to remind you again that book three will not be in present day. Book three will not be in present day. It will fast forward two to three years. Um, and it was because of that visual, because the little girl I saw was was about a toddler, like an older toddler. Um, and that is what we're going to pick up on. Um, what this period... Oh, God, I did just give away a major spoiler, didn't I? I'm sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. I did. I just told you that they're going to have a baby. Oh, guys, I'm sorry about this. Maybe... Oh... I feel so bad. I'm sorry. I don't usually do that. But I wanted to tell you guys. I'm sorry. See this? I'm glad I didn't do this last night because I would have given away more. Anyway, I, I said it. It's out there. <laughs> but we're going to see what that what that portion of the journey is like. And there's a reason why I want to get to that. Um, because Jazz is on this journey of, you know, as a prism, as 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 a stable, solid foundation he's on this spiritual journey and he is determined very similar to Ezra if you guys peep to get everything he's asking for from God he doesn't get it in grace so he has to wait for the promise hence the name of book three the promise dang I feel bad about that I really do it's not bad right because you guys like babies I don't know why y'all got like babies my my sister Rita, Teresa Dr. Teresa love herself some darn babies I'm sorry. Oh, that was really bad. I was not. Anyway, I was determined to be honest and be more transparent in this voice. Um, I'm, excuse me, in this pre-publication thoughts uh, video. Um, will we be releasing before Sunday? Possibly, because I like to get it in the air uh, a few hours before midnight because we never know what Amazon is going to do. So possibly. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, but, um, we are really editing this and I want to shout out to my editing team. Um, after every book, after I do my, my final read, I try to give them feedback. And I think based on my feedback for Mercy, they were like, all right, Elba, we're going to show you. So they tore me a new one in these edits and I really appreciate it. I don't know why as an author, I'm just fascinated with edits because I don't want errors in my book. And I know they're going to be, I know they're, they are going to be there, but I really put a lot of my money Instead of in audio books, no, let me stop. But <laughs> I put it into editing because that is where, you know, I connect with people most on that medium with my with ebooks, you know. So I just want and secondary paperbacks. 
but I just want to put that out there to you. Um, paperback, speaking of which, they won't be available um, until after Indie Love. My publishing partner wants Indie Love to have it exclusively for the Prism series for these two books, and then it'll open up to the world. But I, I, I'm sure there was something else I wanted to mention, but I think I mentioned a lot, and I think I talked too much. So I'm going to let this go, and I... Um, yeah, I'm going to just wait on my proofreader to be done before I format this baby for vellum. And um, I feel like I have some other packaging things to do. But we're going to have a good May for you. This is what I wanted to stress. We got some tricks up our sleeves for May, right? Yeah, for the month of May. So stay tuned. You know, I'm not even going to tell you what it is. Just stay tuned. Um, if you're not on the mailing list, get on the mailing list. If you do not want to be on the mailing list anymore, just unsubscribe because we got to pay for that. So if you're not opening up the emails and like just 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 unsubscribe so we can get somebody else up there in your place but we do so you will be getting a lot of of information from us because we have a we have a few tricks up our sleeves um including the pre-sale order from indie love for indie love so just stay tuned i mean we got some better stuff than that that you guys are gonna like but just stay tuned and I'm going to end this because it's over 20 minutes and it's going to take forever to upload to YouTube. But I'm excited, y'all, because I, I always have to prove to you guys, God gave me a gift. It ain't perfect. His gift to me was perfect, but I have to perfect it, if you understand what I'm saying. And I work each time to perfect it. It is, it's, it, it humbles me. It humbles me, you know, trying to fight to, to work this craft that God has given me. But I'm telling you guys, trust me on the clients I choose because I choose some good stuff. All right, ciao. See you on the other side.